Hi, welcome to Fish. First, I see Kim, and my name is Linda. We're going to talk about a subject today that normally isn't, well, talked about. Communion. Holy communion, right? Now, holy communion is not simply putting a wafer or a cracker or bread or whatever in your mouth, and then we wash it down, you know, with some grape juice. Communion common union with Jesus takes place in the heart. One more time, real communion takes place in our heart. Now, we can have communion with Christ without partaking of the bread and wine. And the bread and wine, well, it's the outside. They are mere representations of what must take place inside. Now look, we can eat Jesus's flesh and drink his blood in spirit. Yes, we can every single day and throughout the day. So, okay, okay, now just hang on for a second. We're going to get there. So in contrast, we can eat matzo bread or whatever, gain 10 pounds and marinate in juice. But if nothing is going on in our hearts, it's meaningless. Yes, it is. It's nothing but an empty ritual. Look, I love, love taking communion, holy communion. I love to share in the experience with my sisters and brothers in Christ. But the sacrament means absolutely nothing if there's no communion between Jesus, our salvation, and us in the inner man of the heart, 1 Peter 3, 4. But wait, right? You're thinking, wait, Linda. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. Well, yes, he did. He did. It's in the Bible. Yes, it did say that. And in obedience to Jesus, we should partake of the bread and wine with others of the body from time to time. And when we do, we should join our hearts to his and to those of our sisters and brothers in Christ. But, but don't we really need to carry on this ritual in order to remember Jesus? Look, when he lives in our hearts and is our heart, when we have close intimacy with him, we need no reminders, for we delight in thinking about him, interacting with him, listening to him, talking to him, and adoring him, worshiping him. Look, by all means, have communion. Have communion service and eat and drink with your physical body. By all means, share the experience with other believers. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, it's not really communion unless you eat Jesus' flesh and drink Jesus' blood in spirit, inside, and into your most inner being. Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. John six fifty three fifty four. It is the spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. John six six three. For my flesh is food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eats my flesh and drinks my blood in spirit dwells in me, and I in him. John six fifty five fifty six. That is what being born again of the spirit is all about. Well, that's it for fish. First I see Kim. My name is Linda, and until next time.